Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, the i3-10100 CPU from Intel seems like a pretty decent way to get into PC gaming without spending too much money. At about £120 here in the UK, it sits level with the 3300X in terms of price, and from what I've seen so far, it seems to be a pretty good performer as far as gaming is concerned. If you want the more well-rounded experience, then again, I'd have to recommend the Ryzen CPUs, but the i3-10100 sure looks to be a pretty decent chip, in all honesty, and I can't wait to show you my full PC build with it coming very soon. Now, as I was putting together this build, I couldn't help but think back to the days of the original Core i3 chip, the i3-530. Now, this was a two-core, four-threaded CPU, and back in 2010, 2011, it would have been the one to buy if you were looking at putting together an entry-level system without spending too much money. These days, you can find them for about two or three pounds here in the UK, and I don't think they're that much more expensive in the United States or mainland Europe either, on the used market, that is. It all depends on where you find them and who's selling them, because we all know that some sellers can be a little imaginative with the prices of older hardware. Nonetheless, I thought it would be fun to do a comparison between the original Core i3-530 and the new i3-10100 today. Now, I know what you're thinking. The i3-10100 is going to blow this old chip out of the water, and I wholeheartedly agree, but I just thought it would be interesting to see how far the i3 range has come and discover what exactly the difference is in terms of frame rates. So the i3-10100, now features four cores and eight threads. This totally breaks the traditional i3 setup. For a long time, the i3s featured two cores and four threads. They eventually switched to four cores and four threads with the i3-8100 before switching to four cores and four threads with the 9100. And now, of course, we have the four core and eight thread setup, which I think was implemented due to the competitive nature of the entry-level Ryzen chips. I'm not sure if Intel would have made that change without AMD being so aggressive at that end of the market, but I'm glad there is finally some more competition as far as the lower end chips are concerned. So as I said before, it is just a bit of fun, but it will be more of a testament to the i3-530 if it can actually pull off playable figures in 2020 in a few of these games. So if it can still run games, it might be worth buying, especially at two or three pounds here in the UK. I'll settle for 30 frames per second. So let's get into it and uh, see what it can do. One quick word though, obviously they are on different sockets, they use different RAM. So with the i3-530, I've used 16 gigs of DDR3 clocked at 1600 megahertz. And with the i3-10100, I've used 16 gigs of DDR4 clocked at 2666 megahertz. This is just the way it is. I'm sure we could have adjusted the RAM speeds to match, but it's, probably not the best idea as it's not representative of a real world situation at all. No one's going to buy this 10100 and then down clock their RAM. So yeah, let's get into it and, uh, and see just what the difference between these two is. So the gameplay you're seeing is from the i3-530. I've paired it with the RTX 2070 to get the most out of it, though in the real world it's an unlikely combo. I'll be putting up the comparative figures on screen for each game tested in the form of average frame rates and 1% lows. Starting off we have GTA 5 at the very high settings. You can see that the i3-530 does a decent job of keeping us above 30 frames per second. This is what I'd call the equivalent of a current gen console experience. It probably looks a little better here though. If we bring up the comparative results, you can get an idea of how performance improves with the modern i3. I'd like to reiterate that this isn't a serious comparison. You shouldn't be asking yourself which one you should buy. It's more of a technological progress report. If you wanted a super cheap GTA 5 single player PC, then this old core i3 might do you just fine though. Now I have to praise the old score i3 here. It managed to hold a 30 FPS average in Red Dead 2. That's a pretty impressive achievement for a CPU of this age. And although we certainly saw a couple of major dips, it wasn't as bad as I thought. However, Keep in mind that going near a big city or town will impact this average, and you'll likely find yourself hovering around the mid-20s frame rate wise. If we throw up comparative results again, we get a good idea of how far Intel's entry-level core series have come. 
Fortnite is next, and boy, what an episode this was. The game ran quite well on the i3-530, at least as far as the average frame rate was concerned, but the game was plagued with graphical glitches. At first, I thought this was due to a drop in internet connection, but I triple-checked everything and even switched the Ethernet cable, and still, this problem persisted. What I will say is that I have experienced this in the past, as well with an old AMD Phenom chip, so it's not unheard of, but it does take you out of the game a little bit. If you can get past this problem, a problem that might not even happen for you, then the FPS figures are quite respectable, though once again you can expect a few drops here and there. Finally we have Warzone, and once again this gave us some trouble on the i3. By some, I mean loads. Firstly, the optimised texture pack refused to install pretty much every time I tried it, and secondly there were so many freezes online that I had to resort to testing the game in a practice match. I then discovered the freezes occurred here as well. Still, I have to commend the old i3 for continuing to put up a fight, even if it was fighting a losing battle. Sounds a lot like my Call of Duty gameplay, to be honest. In the interest of fairness, I tested the new i3 with the practice map as well, though performance won't change too drastically in an online battle royale game, and in fact, you should see similar results. Things were kept at low, with the textures at normal, for the sake of the i3-530. So, as a CPU test, it wouldn't be fair to miss out a CPU-related benchmark. This is Cinebench R20. As you can see, the i3-530 posted a score of just over 400 points, whereas the i3-10100 came in with over 2,000 points. So again, you're going to notice a difference in those CPU-intensive tasks, Premiere Pro, things like that. Of course, though, that is to be expected. So there we are. I think we were all expecting that today. Um, the i3-530 is a very interesting chip as Intel's first i3 CPU. It certainly is exciting to look back at it and whilst it might not be the most powerful chip these days and it will struggle in a lot of modern titles, it does cost about two or three pounds here in the UK and I've had a look on eBay US. You can pick them up for about six or seven dollars which for an entry-level CPU, if you need something cheap, something that's going to play a few titles, like GTA 5, for example, then it may just be right for you. Eleven fifty six socket motherboards are also relatively well priced, and of course DDR three RAM doesn't cost too much either. So you could probably pick up a board, this CPU, and some RAM for maybe thirty pounds, forty pounds here in the UK. I don't like to put that out as a blanket statement because obviously other countries' prices will vary, and as I said before, some sellers do look at these older parts and think, oh, it must be a rare or collector's item. When in actual fact, it's Really not. I've seen that happen, not necessarily with the i3, but with some other hardware. As for my opinion on the i3-10100, well, I'll have a full build on that coming very soon, but it's shaping up to be, from my tests so far, a pretty good CPU. Though I think it's aimed more to those who just want something for pure gaming purposes. I think if you want to put together an i3-10100 build, I would suggest waiting a little longer. Motherboards are relatively new for it. They're quite expensive, more expensive than AM4 boards, put it that way, and I think for the more all-round user, someone who also wants to do perhaps a little bit of video editing, stuff like that, then the Ryzen 3300X might be a better choice. In fact, the Ryzen 33100 might be a better choice because that can also be overclocked on the stock cooler. I mean, mine's running at about 4.2 gigahertz right now on the stock AMD cooler. I might put a video out there about that if you want to see it. But yeah, I'm so glad there is a lot more competition these days at this point in the market. A few years ago, we would have had an FX 4300 and i3 2100 to choose between. Are they even similar? Did they release in the same year? I don't know, but I hope you get what I mean there. The competition is heating up between AMD and Intel. And personally, while well, some people are arguing about which is better, I'm just glad to see that we have more of a range to choose from, not just with the 3100, but you've got stuff like the 1200 AF as well, which could provide 
invaluable to someone who wants something entry level yet still quite capable. Thank you so much for watching this video though. I want to say it again because I know some of you in the comments might be like, oh, what an unfair comparison, what a pointless comparison, but it was just for a bit of fun. It's interesting to see how far Intel's i3s have come. I'm glad they've switched to the eight threaded setup now. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.